I'm going to put the chrome trim around the windshield frame on the car on the inside today just so it doesn't get buggered up laying around. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cat whiskers and the lock barrels on. And the paper came for the moisture barrier so I can hopefully in the next... I got a lot to do now. So hopefully in the next uh, couple of days you'll see this on floor panels. And pretty much, well, I think I'll even, tomorrow's supposed to be 81. So I think I'm going to try and get this cobbled up somehow so it doesn't damage. You know, I'm worried that those spiky things, you know, will damage this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put duct tape over that after I push it over. And then I'm going to take some strips of vinyl and stick them here and then... Just, uh, I'll have to put the seat belts in too, and I'll have to jack the car up to do that. And I was just going to pull the tires, so I guess I'll, I don't know, we may not take it for a ride because I don't want, I don't feel like jacking it up, taking it off the jacks, and then putting it back on to pull the tire, wheels to do tires. But I'm going to try and get the, the, the interior finished up, and then I'm going to tackle the tires, and I got to repaint the hood, so I might pull a hood in the next week or so so I can start stripping that and I can pull it get these broke down and start bead blasting them I can do all my paint work you know the hood and the wheels all around the same time I can paint the wheels outside the hood I'll probably paint in here so I don't get dirt in it but to put the trim on I need to put the top down so we'll hook up the battery here and Run it down. It just makes life easier when the top's not up to to um, work on it, especially doing that stuff, you know. Get the top out of the way. There we go. And now I can have plenty of room to Put the tap on, and every time I hook up the battery, the clock starts running. It's running right now. It just wound. So there we go. We'll uh, get it going here. Now, as you remember, when I had to put the shift lever back on, I had the original roll pin that held it on in a Ziploc baggie. And in that Ziploc baggie, there was a screw. And at the time, I wasn't sure what it was for. Well, now I remember. This little bracket had a screw through there that held this on there. This is the header over the, the windshield. And this is the bracket that holds the visors in the center. And that screws to that. And I took it off before I took it to him so that, you know, little two pieces would be separate to chrome plate. So I'll dig through the packaging of the boxes of goodies and I will find that screw for that and that's where a regular one of those replated trim screws like there 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 here here you know they're visible those screws so that's why i had them plated so they'd all you know look good with you don't want to put new chrome on them put old old crummy looking screws in so that's why i had the screws redone and i did the original ones because trim screws you know, finding replacement trim screws, exact size and dimensions that were originally used is pretty difficult. That's why I sent the original screws that originally held this on with the trim to have it all chromed. So if you send, you know, trim like this out to have it chromed and all the original screws were still holding the trim to the windshield, have your screws re-chromed too. You'll regret it if you don't. So, all right, let me... uh let me dig up that screw and we'll get moving here. Remember how nasty this one was? This is the worst one of the lot. That was the one on the driver's side. That one had almost zero chrome left on it. It was so peeled. That, look at that. That's better than, I guarantee you that's better than when it was new. That's, I believe, the passenger side one. I put this on. You can see where that little screw goes that I was talking about right there. So uh, this piece is, the trim's ready to start fastening. So I guess I'll start getting on it. Figure out, I think that these go on first, and then these go over 
those. And then these, these go on after those. So that's one, two, and this goes on last because it goes over these. This is the passenger side piece. Yeah, it looks really, really good. I forgot to video it with this camera after I videoed it with my phone for Instagram. Let me go over to the other side too. It's really nice out. It's like 73, 74 right now. Yeah, so we'll get the interior finished up hopefully very soon. I'm going to start oil and undercoating this right now. And then while the grease, spray grease dries, I'm going to put some patio furniture out. So I don't know what all I'm going to get done today, but the door panels are essentially just waiting on the cat whiskers and little lock ferrules. And I'm going to try and buff the original ones out, see if I can clear them up. I got some plastic polish for my buffer somewhere here. Um, I don't know, one of those is for plastic, and I'll give it a try if it doesn't do any good. Got new ones, so we'll see what we can do with them. That's what I do, I spray. I oiled down in there a couple of days ago, but I just sprayed the white grease and everything in there, all the way down in the bottom and everything. And then I'll just uh, let that dry on there a little bit and I'll spray the rubberized undercoating over it. And that'll keep it from rusting. That's the first time the top has been latched in five months. Yeah, it looks, I'll let that pull the wrinkles out. It hasn't pulled tight, like I say in five months so anyway i put the the window up too and i'm just going to leave it up for a while and let all the wrinkles and folds and everything work out while i finish up the doors that is all rust proof now anyway i don't think there's enough light really to show but take my word for it it's all undercoated really well I'm getting ready to install a cat whisker, so I just trimmed a little off that so this will sit on there nice and flush. And to figure out where exactly this needed to be, I took that. These staple holes are in different places on the original and the, and the uh, replacement, so I figured out where that one was originally on here. It gave me a pretty good idea where this one needs to go. And uh, I'm going to start... Putting sta I'm going to put a staple in here and see how far off those holes are for this one. I don't think they're the same. They might be. I think they're, you can see they're just a little off. Let's see if we can't get those. Look pretty even there. It doesn't look it in the camera, but the camera's, I think, because it's on a funny angle. But those are definitely not lining up. Those don't line up. There was no holes here. None there. None there. Those. So I'm going to have to make all new holes in the, in the thing here to put this on. To drill through the vinyl, run your drill bit in reverse. Otherwise, you'll twist it up in the drill. And then once you get through the vinyl, you can put it forward to get through the, the metal. So I'm going to got my drills I got to get the drill right size drill out and so it's really pretty cut and dry the main thing is just getting this position see this is actually not as long as the door panel and there it's exactly the same as the original one in length and the original one was about like that on here and I'll measure it and get it exactly right before I drill any holes and fasten it but I just you know right now I'm just kind of fitting it up seeing what all you know just take your time with this stuff it'll come out a little better I just marked it 
where the original one went and made sure it fit all the way up. You know, it needs to be pushed up and over, but it's clamped and I got my, my drill out. I'll run it in reverse through the vinyl and then forward through the metal. So let me, uh, I'm going to use both hands so I can hold this metal while I drill. So you, And plus drilling is boring. You don't need to see how I drill holes. But yeah, I'm just going to go around and do that to all. Uh, I won't be clamping on this, only on this, because it just helps keep it in place while I start the first staple. I got the first one in nice and tight. And now I'm going to put the rest in. I started them just so I know where the holes are to to drill you know you're gonna have a hard time finding them through this cat whisker if you don't get them in through the holes to begin with then you can find them easier when you go to drill them well true to reproduce parts these things are garbage so those will go in the garbage can and these are going back in the door panels and I polished them up I'll show you what I used to polish them up was I used this with the uh, this stuff right here it says there compound used to prevent scratches and restore the natural look of aluminum and plastics can be used on corning countertops it's the white polishing compound and I just used it on this fine wheel over there and it worked out really well so that polished them up nice to where I can reuse them and uh, this is the original. I got new ones of these. We'll see how they look once they go on. But anyway, the cat whisker and the lock, little lock things installed. And now for the uh, the paper, which I'm going to put the other door panel together like this. And then I'll put the paper on the door, make sure all these are in their correct spots, get them all, you know, for the handles and latches and stuff we can install the door panels there's my patterns i'm going to use to make the new door papers and i'll double check the holes on the door panels with the papers before i install them on the car and i got to find my ribbon cock because that's how it was held across like that and then I, it was tucked into a drain and taped down the bottom Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse the original lock buttons. You can see how the reproduction is rounded, dished, and the other one has a pointy. See how the turn signal switch and the lever have that same pointy look that the lock button has? Yeah, so I'm going to clean the originals of those up too and reuse them. Just to give you the heads up if you buy the reproductions, they are not the same. I hope that shows up. There we go, a little chrome polish, and it looks like new. A little, you can see a little wear on the sides where it's, you know, gone up and down in the collar over the past 55 years. You know, the car is 55 years old and has 77,000 miles. But, yeah, how much extra effort would that have taken to reproduce that than what they did? You know, something that's correct instead of incorrect. All the holes match up correctly. I'm going to take this into my basement on the mat cutter and the new stuff and I'm going to set this on top, trace it out and cut it. I may have to tape it where it's curled and some of it here is torn away but you know I can get the overall general uh, and I gotta polish the aluminum trim that goes on the bottom. I think I might do that right now. Those buffed up pretty good. You can tell that this is the driver's side one just because you can see where there's little scratches from shoes and stuff on it. And uh, I'm going to buff up the screws, too. You can see kind of how that trim goes on. It kind of hangs just a little below the door panel to protect the bottom edge. You know, so when you get in, your shoes don't mar it up. This actually takes a beating instead of a vinyl. And uh, holds the whole bottom on. That's going to look nice. That will look good once there's a little veneer in there or wood trim. That'll look good. All right, let me get... Um, cutting that. This is the roll of paper right here, the water barrier paper, and uh, it's exactly the same as this. It's actually just slightly thicker than this, which is okay, or maybe about the same. I'd say it's the same, same exact stuff. 
but this is uh, what it is if you're interested. I got it from Auto Crafters. So for 30 bucks, why not put enough on? This is, uh, I think this is a, it's two foot wide by 12 feet long. So it should be enough to do a full car. Um, that's about, I think a little less than two feet maybe. So it'll easily do the car. After really looking at these door panel papers, this one has the patterns that match this door, the openings and stuff. And it has the, the sealer to hold it on, on the black side. The other side was like, as if you took this, this paper from here over to there and put it on this way. So they use two right hand, I'm thinking, on the car. So I'm going to make them both. I think that this side should face the, the cardboard, the door panel, and this side should be on the, the wet side. Maybe I'm wrong. If I am, I can just switch them from door to door. I'll, do, I'll go online and look. But I think that is supposed to face the, the wet end because... I think that black is like a sealer to prevent water from getting through. Maybe mistaking, but that's my logic. And so I'm going to make them both so the black faces in. And uh, if if I'm wrong, I'll just flip flop them. No big deal. They're they're identical. They're they're identical. This one will fit over there. It'll fit either side, but depending on which color you want facing in the door and I think like I say we're going to make black face in. I got the paper cut and I fit it and I put the caulk kind of where the original caulk was only and the rest was taped. This is where that paper tucks down in there to drain the um, water out between here you know the rain water that gets when the window's up, you know, if the car's on an angle and rain hits the glass and it drips in, it can come all the way over here. And if it gets that cardboard wet for the door panel, it warps it, and that protects it from getting wet. And uh, so this was where the factory used the caulk. I actually have, from when I worked in the Ford dealers, the correct stuff they used. And uh, we're going to get it on there and tape the rest like Ford originally taped it. So you can see how that paper tucks in there. Full length of the door other than a little little stretch right here where they didn't uh, separate you know for strength on the door. But I'm gonna tape the full length so that stays in there. That was taped from the factory. This side you could clearly see the caulk was all the way around everything except for where those that drip thing was. So, um, I did the same with that door over there, just to make it all the same as this one. I pulled the paper back a little bit on the edges and just continued the, the stuff. You can see where it was clearly on there originally. You know, I think that the reason why it had the one paper inside out, they probably ran out and just started pulling off the one pile for the other side, so that's why... One was different, you know. They're, they're exact mirror images. I actually used the same piece to make both because the one was in good shape and I just flipped it over on the other and it fits perfect. I've already test fitted on this door and it fits uh, perfect. So let me, uh, I got the caulk on now, so let me get this thing on taped up and, and uh, the tape because it wants to curl back up. <laughs> Otherwise, this would probably hold it. But like I say, the tape needs to be because that's what it wants to do. It's been in a roll. Just polishing up the releases. The cranks still have wax. The driver's side door panel is all on. I got a. I tried to tape that. Just fold some masking tape around, and it just fell off. So I'll wait and get that. You know, the little emblem that goes there. You can see where it goes. And I just put the old original armrest back on just to protect that little chrome base there. You know, so it won't get messed up. But there we go. 
I'll make a new new pad. I'll take a thin piece of plywood, some foam, and I'll cut it and stitch it. And we'll, we'll do something, make it look nice. They're not available. I've looked and looked and looked. And uh, I found a red one and yeah, I'm not going to go to all the bother trying to spray dye it. I'll, I'll redo them, but you can see the trim on the bottom. The wing windows, you remember, did not work when I got the car. Everything works as it should now. And uh, latch handle, everything. And yeah, this thing just looks really bad, but like I say, it helps protect that chrome, so that's why I put it on there. And uh, there we go. It smells like a brand new car on the inside, so I put the windows up. And look at, listen how much better the doors, doors don't sound all tinny now. They shut real nice, so. Um, let me, um, I got, I'm going to start putting this cat whisker on right now. Start working on this door. It was time consuming. You know, by the time I put the cat whisker on, I had to pull some of the vinyl. You know, I had to use the old paper to figure out where the, where these go. And, uh, because the vinyl is covering up most of where they got to go. So... I had to figure out, you know, where I needed to cut. So that was a bit of fuss. It was a bit of, bit of fuss. Here's the passenger side armrest. This one isn't too bad. But like I say, if I make one, I'm going to have to make them both. There is a part number on it. It is C5AB6224100BWKZ. I don't know if that shows up there or not, but show you what it looks like from uh, the passenger side. Now, mind you, there's no seat backrest in that. And again, that emblem's not on the panel, but how oh, does that look nice? What a difference. And uh, we'll get this one here together. Tomorrow, I'm gonna, I am going to put the cat whisker on it tonight, but tomorrow is when I'll put the panel on. It's like I say, it was it was all day doing that one panel, you know, so it looks nice. The door panel is on on this door too, so it's all done. I didn't video this one because you know it was no different than the driver's side door. This armrest is in way better shape. So there we go. And I clean it up. I haven't wiped it down yet, but I just wanted to kind of show how everything looks. That trim strip looks nice on there. Everything's looking good. Let's get some video of it from the driver's side. Yeah, not the best lighting in the world, but you can see it. Looks pretty darn nice. There we go. So just waiting on a cover for here. I got to put the seatbelt things in and I'll do that when the car's jacked up. And I think tomorrow that'll happen. I think I'm going to call it a day, but tomorrow we'll jack it up. And I think I'll get the, the wheels off, maybe run them to the tire store and see if they can break them down and order a new set of tires and I can start be blasting this weekend. If I don't get them there tomorrow, it'll be Monday or Tuesday before I can get them there. But anyway, yeah, so it looks... Put the windows up, and that way the interior stays a little cleaner on the car. I still have these little uh, gadgets to finish up here. And uh, like I say, put those seat belts. This is all for these and the stainless trim that goes on the, this uh, part of the seat. So, 
Yeah, a few things to do on the interior still, but for the most part, uh, the interior is done. Hopefully we'll get a new one of these very soon. And uh, then we can, once it's got new tires on it, do a little, go for a little ride. And I got, I might, uh, after I get the tires on, get the hood off and paint it. But I want to drive it a little bit and uh, buff it out and buff the, what needs to be buffed on it and get the, get the rest of the chrome back from the plater and we can put the rest of the exterior stuff on it. He still has the letters and the emblems and the turn signal lever. Still has that too. But there we go. I don't know if there's too much reflection or not, but it looks really nice, no doubt about it. I'm going to call it a day on this video. If you like the video, definitely hit the like button. If you want to subscribe to my channel, hit that 348 engine icon there. I'll subscribe you and thank you for watching.